when it's cold outside. It's 1999, my nigga. Think about back in the days when he was 89, little nigga on the grind, gotta get my doing my crime. Two in here, steady stack my ends, put my serve down on the clear 99. Hitting up the graveyard ship, rear little wheel, big Wally and wishbone. Little Wally, high rollers, and they wonder why niggas so strong. Crazy bone. Stack right, J must love, kept a nigga on his toes in the game. It's an everyday thing that you nuts hang. Gotta get. Daily man, them Cleveland hustlers, never no busters, stuck to the heartbeat, them niggas from the land pool, and the old school, just serve our tough sentence and be cool, fucking with truths, rest in peace, little nigga, rip the stress that bone love. Cause a nigga mo thug call a number, niggas when it's time to nut them. In the 99 head it's gon' drop to the number one with the gun, so run, run. Cleveland is the city where a nigga come from, slinkin' them dum-dums, come, come. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? A rapper. I always wanted to be a rapper, man. I, w I also wanted to be a lawyer too, but you know, the rapper was more of a realization. When did you know you wanted to do music? Well, I I was born doing music. My mother is a singer. You feel me? Like in the beginning of our days, like Motown. We was inspired by that, Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson, Temptations, all that, all my mother's music in her generation. Then New Edition, you know, and then, of course, Michael Jackson. That's inspiration to the fullest. What was your family home situation like growing up? Mm. Growing up, man, it was like, you know, my whole family situation was like ran into the Ronald Reagan administration, you feel me, from being from Cleveland, Ohio. It was crazy because they put that dope down there and then, you know, it put it it hit the hood. And that's kinda was my mother's uh story that was all of me and my dogs, my family was caught up by the drug trade and all that shit. You feel me? Like, it was like, I'm trying to really sum this up for you so you can get it, the gist of it. When I was little, little, three, four, five, man, we went everywhere with my mother, man. When Ronald Reagan and all that, let them people come in there with that stuff, man, it's, Killed the ghetto. What was a regular day like for you on East 99 in St. Clair growing up? Hectic. East 99. Hectic. It was so, it was so fucking long ago, man. I don't even... I can't even believe that was my life. That, it was like very hectic. You know, a challenge. Uh, uh, an obstacle a test. Should I bite into this dumb shit that they aggravate me with or should I just leave and go make my own way? Y'all know what I chose. Did you like school? Did you graduate? I love school, man. Like school was my favorite pastime. We got to eat lunch. I came from a real poor situation, you feel me? So like school was like the only thing I had. Science, math. I mean, like I said, I love education, you know what I mean? I read books all day, every day, every plane. I think education is the most vital thing that we can have besides a good heart. What would you say is the fondest moment of your childhood? Uh, I say playing baseball was my fondest moment because I thought I was going to be a baseball player. What's the worst memory you have of your childhood? The worst memory of, I, of my childhood? Um, I don't have a worst memory. Like, my childhood was pretty challenging, straight up. Like, it was fun. Either, either you was the best 
or no? Nah? Do you have any kids? If so, how many and how old? Boy or girl? <laughs> I got eight kids, man. Ten grandkids. Yeah. Y'all know what Paw Paw do. Can you describe the feeling you had when you found out you were going to be a father? Where were you in life? Mm. Actually, I was uh, 14 years old. Already doing what grown people do. You feel me? So I was I was almost pretty knowing that I was going to be a rapper for the rest of my life when my son was born. Feel me? He made the difference, though, because I'd probably still be selling dope if he wasn't born. Are your kids into music as well? Yeah, man. All my children do music. You know, uh, J-Bone. He was on the Mo Thug 3 album. We had a song called Backyard. I wrote him a verse, but I went to the restroom, right? When I got back, he had his shit done. His grandmother was like, I know you ain't gonna let him sing that song. I said, he wrote it. Look, then I got the crew, which is my youngest ones, Trinity, Stevie, Steven, they call the crew. Stevie sound like he got some Michael Jackson, Steve Vine rap, his little heart out. And Trinity, whew, she do all that shit. And then, you know, they mom, Felicia from Ghetto Cowboy, it's all good. Yeah, we got married a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> My baby brother, Stuart, right? We call him Stew These Nuts. He got his thing going, you know what I mean? Um, Har it's all Harmony House, Chosen Empire, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and the rest. Smoking hydro, feeling fine, slow sipping on wine, wine, yeah. Get a wine, hydro, yeah. Should have been told you, living proof soldiers, winos. Nigga like the spliff dog, fifth dog and charro. Have you ever been to jail? If so, for how long and for what? Why y'all want to know if a nigga a criminal or not? <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> hey, look, man. Yeah, I've been to jail, man. August 23rd, 1989. I was on the news and everything. You probably can find the footage. Yeah, I went to jail. I did my motherfucking time. And I'm back. Flat out, I pay my pay my dues. Can you describe what jail was like? No place nobody want to be. Rather be like roaming the country and shit like that. Going hiking, taking my kids to the game and stuff like that. Like, I like freedom. Have you ever been shot? Yeah, I got shot, man, one time. Man, I'm walking down the street, man. Niggas, dudes think I'm another dude. Shoot me in the back of the head, left ear. So I, I already knew what when that happened. I knew that I was it was something was meant to be. Can you describe the feeling of being shot? What was running through your mind? Well, thank God my brother was there. You know what I'm saying, flesh and bone. He kind of carried me all the way home. I don't know what happened. I just got hot and fainted. Next thing I know, my brother had me in front of my mother with the ambulance and shit like that. Can you describe what it was like waiting for Flesh to come home from jail after nine years? <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell you a short story. 
See, what happened when Flesh was coming home, it kind of like played my nigga, right? Like, he was supposed to get out one day. They denied him. So it was like three more days we was there. We had, we got the bus. He went from the penitentiary straight into the studio. The feeling I had, it was just surreal, man. Like, that's the closest person to me ever. That's my brother, man. Niggas didn't understand that. How did Flesh adapt to being in society again? And how did it feel to be with your family and friends again after so long? I mean, that's, it was like, it was like I said, it was surreal, man. Like, Flesh came home and all he wanted was bone together. Because if y'all, if anybody noticed, we was like all over the place. You feel me? His one wish was he got to get his group together. So when he came home, he had to do an extra three days for some dumb shit. I don't even know what happened. But we was posted up out there. My dad, my mom, my brothers, my wife, my his wife, his kids, my kids, aunt's kids, crazy kids, and his crazy. Um, busy, we was all there. He went straight to the studio and we dropped a uh, the game ain't ready, the world ain't ready, these niggas ain't ready cause we coming heated heavy, the game ain't ready, right off the bus. Do you remember the first time you heard one of your songs on the radio? <laughs> the very first time I heard our music on the radio, we was on the bus. And somebody came down. It was a Cadillac with some gold datings on it. It's the thuggish, ruggish bone. We on the bus like, nigga, that's our shit. That's our shit, nigga. Be out the window like, nigga, that's our shit. We was on, we was on the R. We call it the Rita, RTA in Cleveland. Public transit shit, you know. We ain't even had no cars yet. What does the song Flow Motion mean to the success of Bone Thugs and Harmony? So Flow Motion is like, um, that's the style. You know what I mean? That's why we got so many versions of Flow Motion. Because that's where it all come from. We flow, flow when we go, go and flow mo. We flow, flow when we go, go and flow mo. That was the first one. What kind of jobs did you have to do before you made it in the industry? Nigga had to clean toilets with a toothbrush. No, I'm just bullshit. <laughs> now I worked at KFC. I worked at uh, Kroger's down in Dallas. I, I always kept a job, man. So dope too. That's how I kept my shit going. But that was, you know, I worked at fast food restaurants. Back when it was 1991, and it was $3.85 for minimum wage an hour. Treating a nigga bad. I had to get famous. Fuck that. Been labeled a menace and put in the Guinness. You better go check my manuscript. Killer for real, a drug dealer. My nigga just kick it and bet through the land with my click. Better check with the wind, blue wind. Y'all better move, I'm finna get started. Yo, burning from the land of the harlot, strapped with a nine, don't make me spark it. Y'all probably heard the news. If not, you need to check it. Bone Thugs and Harmony broke away from useless records. Independent now. Shit ain't funny now. Getting so much money. And I'm loving the way it's going down. Roller get rolled over, partner number one. Nigga, that's my name. When it's going, stand on point. Give me the ball, that's my game. No disrespect. But I run with the best of the best From the north to the south From the north to the south To the east to the west Oh yes, I'm blessed This nigga don't need no vest Yo, I want it all And no And nothing less 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 uh, I try almost anything To collect my mail I try almost anything To stay out of jail And I'm not a coward I'll never ever tell Rather kill a copper Than to put me in the cell Gone. <laughs> 
what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Oh, that's easy. The best piece of advice I ever been given was from my homeboy, Dragos, man. It took me like six years to figure out what the heck he was talking about. He was like, do your shit. That's the advice. Forget everything else that's going on. Do your shit. And when it rung, I said, Dre goes, do your shit. And here we go. And I met Dre goes from Easy E. Where were you when you first found out that Easy E was sick? And what was your immediate reaction? I was in Cleveland when I found out he was sick. Flew to LA, cause you gotta remember, we was with him every day up until then. I was straight out of Compton would have showed that, but it left the door open for us so we could tell our part with Easy E at the end. But I was in Cleveland my reaction was like, you bullshitting. You a motherfucking lie. Because he just had a common cold. We was in New York with him and Ice, they put that in the movie. Ice Cube, but they ain't show no bone because we was there with the stare down and all that. And they was friends above everything. So what happened was, I ain't, I, I don't know. They killed my nigga, man. I don't know. It don't happen like that. Let's move on. Can you tell me what your thoughts are on Jerry Heller? He's a very passionate man. After what I just said, I ain't going to say shit else about none of that. How do you feel about the amount of African Americans that have been killed by police recently? You know, it's like the definition of insanity. You do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. That shit is insane. Ain't nobody standing up. Ain't nobody doing nothing. But I guarantee you, 10, 10, 15, I'm going to be marching with uh, Farrakhan, too. Because we want justice. And that's it. How have you prepared your children to deal with police if the situation were to arise? Oh, my kids plead the fifth. Don't say a motherfucking thing. If I ain't there and our attorney ain't there, don't say nothing. That's how I train my children. I don't give a fuck if you're right. Don't talk. What's your name? That's what you know. Take me in. Let me get out. Do you believe in the afterlife? Do you believe in the afterlife? <laughs> yeah, be careful with these questions you ask, nigga. Yeah, I believe in the afterlife. I believe we got a soul. Like, people be moving and shit. And then when they when they soul leave them, they still leave a shell behind. So where do that soul go? Don't nobody know, but it gotta be something. Why well, you got me going deep? Do you believe we all have guardian angels? What do you think of the spirit world? Man, I think it's people that live before us that protect us to bring forth the new nature of whatever it is we supposed to be presenting at these days and times. Like, I believe my grand grand, my papa, my uncle Bobby, I got angels around me. It is more than luck. It's kind, it's kind of being blessed. How does it feel to have saved a diabetic's life? Can you tell us more about what happened recently? We was in um, 
South Dakota. I was going, I forgot where the show was at, but we was going to the show, man. It was this guy, he just swerving on the freeway. I'm like, oh, he about to kill us, man. I thought he was drunk. But end up, when he spent out on the side of the road and his car didn't flip, I just ran over there like, you got to stop the car, stop the car. The person didn't want to stop the car. I'm like, you got to stop the car. So it was a diabetic situation, and I knew that because I seen that before. I saw that before. So, you know what I mean? I was just in the right place at the right time, man. It'd be helpful. That's all. In the beginning of your careers, it seems people unfairly labeled you as devil worshippers for doing what a lot of kids and teenagers do at that age, for experimenting with Ouija boards. Can you tell me in detail about any experiences you had with the Ouija board at that age? Man, we was just having fun. We was walking around Toys R Us one day. We got a Monopoly board, a chess board, and a Ouija board. You feel me? We played all the games. It's just that spirit realm. Something about that Ouija board, why would they sell that shit in Toys R Us to some kids anyway? If it's supposed to be all devilish. I look at everything like, you know, the good Lord, he gonna control everything anyway. He only grants you what you get to do and experience. So I don't know, man. You know, that's a Toys R Us game. Boycott Toys R Us. Don't boycott Bone. Don't call us devils because we pray every day. Remember that? Have you ever seen a ghost? I ain't never seen no ghost. Ever. I seen the shadow. (laughs) I ain't seen no ghost. You have sold over 30 million records worldwide and have collaborated with some of the music industry's biggest names. Can you tell us any stories about any of these artists or maybe something the fans didn't know about them? Big pun? I think Joey Crack did an uh, interview just lately. And he was talking about a little bit about how we get down. So we looking out the window and these girls showing their titties, that bone thugs, they going crazy. Big pun, man, like, he wasn't even big, all the way big pun. He was on Flesh's first solo album, doing the chorus line. He was our friend. Yeah, that dude right there was off the hook. Mariah Carey. She's so cute. Phil Collins in Switzerland for the Take Me Home video. Phil Bone. You talking about Phil Bone. Phil Bone was out there all day, like, with his little collar turned up. It was cold as hell in Switzerland. <laughs> he was like, my name Phil Bone. He stayed there the whole time with us. For real. Biggie. <laughs> Nigga took my weed. Biggie Smalls took my weed and everybody know it. He talking about, <laughs> let me get that lay. I'm just saying, though, you know, him, Lil C's, Kim, Puffy. Man, we had a ball doing that song. One thing people don't know, though, uh, Biggie didn't do his verse that night. So we didn't hear his verse until after when the album came out. He was already rest in peace. So we was like, this the first one that did it, like, armed and dangerous, ain't too many can bang with us, stayed up, we no angel dust. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was an honor. Because my nigga was gone, so he was gone. Tupac. Bouncing off the walls. He just the, the realest nigga that ever wrote. That nigga heart so genuine. When I say nigga, though, let me just adopt a little bit of Tupac. 
Never ignorant getting goals accomplished. That's the acronym. That's enough. Easy E. <laughs> Thank you, Easy E. That's all I'm going to say. Can you recall a period of your life or any of the other members' lives when they were really down? And how did they cope? Or how did you help each other cope? Man. Damn. I was like a little miserable kid, though. Like, everybody still to this day, you just think I'm happy, 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 happy. You feel me? But, like, we had each other. That's the only reason we was able to cope with the drama. It was, you know, teamwork, man. Make the dream work. We real brothers. We real friends and shit. We, we really, like, pay attention to what each other feel. It's real ones. Is it true that in Cleveland, on October 30th, it's known as Bone Thugs and Harmony Day? You motherfucking right. October 30th is Bone Thugs and Harmony Day in Cleveland, right before Halloween. So, uh, don't make us, don't make us come, uh, get you. <laughs> if you can give the youth any last advice or anything to motivate them, what would you say? If I can give the youth some advice, man, I would say study, do your work. Actually, just don't be shy. Ask questions that... The genius way, like anything you don't understand, just ask questions. If you want to do the music, learn the music. You got to learn it. You got to learn the 22 immutable laws of branding. You got to learn the 22 immutable laws of marketing. You got to learn the 48 laws of power. You have to get on your shit, young world. Because a reader going to get all the money. Peace be still. I love y'all. Peace. Epilepsy. Marijuana has been shown in studies by Virginia Commonwealth University to stop seizures <laughs> in the school's animal studies. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> mm hmm I told you I got got I got got glaucoma. Marijuana heal everything. Glaucoma is a condition that increases pressure inside my eyeballs and can lead to vision loss. I need this shit, America. Old Canada. Oil out the hemp plant. We can make gasoline out the hemp plant. That's why I smoke weed. That shit work. Arthritis. This is how marijuana can help you. Arthritis have an ass people. We can do everything out the hemp plant. We ain't never got to cut another motherfucking tree. We got the hemp plant. I need this shit for my arthritis. Marijuana can alleviate pain and inflammation linked to arthritis. That mean it make your joints work better. What the fuck? Research published in MedPage today found that marijuana ease tremors and improve fine motor skills in patients with Parkinson's disease. I am not lying. It says it right there. If we grow it, we got the hemp plant. I'm out of here. Thank you, V.